Lesson 5 of chapter 4 is using similar figures. And what that means is we're going to use similar figures to solve proportions and define measures. So that'll be the first thing we do is define measures. Then we'll do a measurement application. Then we'll do an estimating with an indirect measurement. Just a reminder for last lesson, similar figures have the same angle measurements. Here they're all 90 degrees in both angles. And then they have proportional sides, meaning the ratios are the same. So here the short side is twice as long as this short side, so then the long side would be twice as long as this long side. So twice of 2 would be 4. So I could solve these angles because I know that these shapes are similar. So it tells us that triangle ABC, and this is the sign for similar, is similar to triangle JKL. So it tells us to find the unknown measures. This triangle looks like it's flipped, it's reversed, and that's okay. Remember, I, we said that last lesson, that they, they're still similar if they're, re they're reversed. And if that confuses you at all, if it gives you trouble, you can number your angles, and sometimes that helps people. Because the, the order that they tell you the triangle is very important. A comes first, followed by B, followed by C. J, K, and L in, in that order as well. So A lines up with J, B lines up with K, and C lines up with L. So if we would number it, I'd go 1 for A, 2 for B, and 3 for C. In the same way, I would go 1 for J, 2 for K, and then 3 for L. And now I can more easily match up these angles. So we need to find the angle of K, and we need to find the distance between K and L. First, let's do that angle. So I know that angle 2 matches up with this angle 2 because they both go second in the name. So I know that this angle needs to be exactly the same as that angle. So I can solve for y. y equals, y equals 103 degrees. So now I need to find the length of x, which is between 2 and 3. Well here I see the distance between 2 and 3 is 12. So I know my ratio is going to be x over 12. And then to solve x over 12, I could use a ratio from other parts of the triangle to do that. So I can do the length of between 1 and 3 for both sides and then make that a similar proportion. For the big triangle, it would be 56. The small triangle would be 16. I know the ratio between x and 12, x and 12, is going to be the same ratio as 56 and 16 because these triangles are similar. And notice that I put the 56 on top because the x was on top. I put both the big triangle numbers in the numerator, and I put both the small triangle numbers in the denominators. So now I can cross multiply and solve. x times 16 equals 12 times 56. So 12 times 56 equals 672. So 16x equals 672. So I can divide both sides by 16. So 672 divided by 16 gives me 42. So x equals 42. So I know that this length would be 42. I can move my answers up here. So just to recap of that, I knew that x compared to 12 because x was between 2 and 3 and so was 12. So I did x over 12, and then I lined up 56 and 16 because I knew 56 was between 1 and 3, and so was 16. So I did the big ones on top, the small triangles on the bottom, and I used cross products to solve for x. Let's do a measurement application. Same idea. A volleyball court is a rectangle that is similar in shape to an Olympic-sized pool. So find the width of the pool. So I can create a proportion problem and solve it the same way as I did with this, with that triangle. So I know the long side here is 50, the long side here is 18. So I can write a proportion 50 to 18. The pool has 50 and the volleyball court has 18. And then I'm going to write the same proportion. I'm going to do x instead of a question mark. x over 9. And this is really important. Notice I had the x on top because I had the pool 50 on top over here. So the both the volleyball court numbers are on the bottom. So now I can cross multiply and solve. 18 times x, x times 18, 18 times x equals 50 times 9. 
50 times 9 is 450, so 18 times x equals 450. Divide both sides by 18. And then 450 divided by 18 would be 25. So x equals 25. So I can put 25 over here because that's how long, because that's how wide the pool would be. So here we can estimate with indirect measurement as well using these ratios. This totem pole here at the right is way too tall to measure without getting a ladder of some sort. So, But we can actually use indirect measurement to solve it because both these objects are casting a shadow. And I know how tall this person is. This person's five feet tall. So from comparing the big shadow to the small shadow, the big shadow is 15.5 feet. The small shadow is 3.75 feet. Then I need to solve the real actual height of x compared to the smaller height of 5, so x over 5. I'm going to write these as ratios. And notice I put the 15 on the top because that's the bigger one. Then I put the x on the top as well because that's also the same thing. And then the 3.75 and 5 are both on the bottom because they're the same person as well. So now I can use cross products to solve. 15.5 times 5 equals 3.75x. So 3.75x equals 15.5 times 5. 15.5 times 5 equals 77.5. So 3.75x equals 77.5. Divide both sides by 3.75. And that'll give me 20.666, so that'd be 20 and two-thirds. So I'm going to round up to 20.67, which would be 20 and two-thirds, and that'd be feet. So this would, x would be 20.67 feet.